Hey everyone and welcome back to another RC Gameplays video. I don't want to take too long, so let's just get into the rules of this ranking. So how is one considering an antagonist in this game? Well, I'm glad he didn't ask, but to be considered, they have to meet the following criteria. Well, first they gotta be present in Batman Arkham Asylum, obviously. They must interact with Batman directly, they must either pose a physical or psychological threat to Batman, and they must have a significant impact on the main Arkham Asylum story. An obvious example of potential inclusions to the list would be Killer Croc or Poison Ivy. Cameos like Ratcatcher or Clayface are out because they don't really influence the plot or Batman's journey. The same goes with the Titans, they're just mindless enemies with no real characterization. No personality so to speak. So they won't make the cut either. Still, I'm sure that some of my picks are gonna surprise you guys. I'll be ranking these antagonists based on their threat level, how much they influence Batman in the main and side stories, and how memorable or challenging their boss fights are. I'll also take into account how interesting these characters are, what they offer, their personality as well, how their presence impacts the hero and the atmosphere that they bring to the game. Though while well, these are the rules I composed, this doesn't mean that I'm the most right. So do tell me your list down below so that we can compare how wrong you guys are. Now, but before getting into this list, please feel free to subscribe for more mediocre content like mine. And thank you all guys for the support. Even though I've been absent for a long time, your support is incredible. So, you know what? Let's get into this. Ah, man Mr. J doesn't want you fun. This just yet. So just about making it to the top 5, we have the one and only Harley Quinzel. Like with Zaz, this game marked my first experience with the character. And she quickly left a strong impression. Voiced brilliantly by Arlene Sorkin, Harley's voice captures her quirky, chaotic energy and adds so much to her character. Bringing her unique blend of playfulness and menace, which I think all of us DC fans appreciate. Unfortunately, for a character with such a strong personality and memorable appearance, it's a shame that the game treats her like the Joker and relegate her to taunts and brief confrontations despite her near constant presence throughout the game. Still, her boss fight stands out for me as one of the best in the series, even if we don't get to fight Harley ourselves. It's unique and challenges the player in a fun, creative way, but it doesn't tap into her deeper motivations or potential for conflict with Batman, something that the future games tackled much better. Still, she's presented more as a playful noose than the complex antagonist, which, given her history, feels like a missed opportunity. I'm also personally not a fan of her overly sexualized persona and outfit, especially when compared to her later, more layered characterizations, but that's just a small nitpick of mine. Harley scores high for her memorable voice acting, strong presence, and entertaining interactions, especially with good old Sharpie. She also plays a role in shaping the chaotic atmosphere of the game, making Arkham feel more unpredictable. But her overall characterization lacks the depth and longevity that higher ranked villains possess, leaving her impact somewhat fleeting. So while definitely memorable and far from the bottom of the list, her lack of deeper characterization and occasional over-reliance on sexual appeal hold her back from a higher spot in my opinion. I've got your scent, Batman. I will hunt oh, you down. Another villain with a really compelling introduction, Killer Croc takes the fourth place on this list. Croc's initial appearance alone, the towering, imposing figure snarling at Batman, establishes him as the most fear-inducing foes in the island. I, I know I already said it, but I love the way he's introduced through this small walk that we have with the Joker. His character design is masterfully done, making him look less like a man, and more like an unstoppable beast lurking in the shadows, always on the verge of breaking free. This powerful visual introduction is backed by his threatening lines and the grim sense that Croc is far from done with Batman. The real standout for Croc is his boss battles in the sewers, one of the most memorable encounters in the game. Unlike most traditional boss fights, this one is built on suspense and dread rather than head-on combat, and it's one that even as an adult I still get fearful of playing later on in the day. Navigating the murky waters while Croc lurks below, almost like a horror-like experience. His sudden appearance from the water aren't just jump scares, they're genuine tests of nerves, as Batman has to tread carefully knowing Croc could strike at any moment. This battle forces players to use st stealth and strategy over brute force, testament to Croc's strength and the raw danger he represents. Despite this great introduction and battle, Croc's presence could have been more pronounced throughout the story. There are limited reminders of his lurking threat, so it feels like he's on the sidelines until the actual fight. Little hints like echoes of the growls in the sewers while exploring the island, or subtle clues and dialogue could have created this thrilling sense of his looming presence. As it stands, his impact is mostly contained with his areas, missing that lasting effect that a character as terrifying as Croc could bring. Ultimately, Killer Croc lands in 4th 
because of his chilling design, fear-inducing debut, and unforgettable boss battle. However, the lack of continuous threat weakens his overall impact compared to the higher-ranked villains. I'm here now, my poor darlings. Yes, I know he's found us, but I won't let him hurt you. I'll kill him first. Capturing our third place, we have Poison Ivy. Originally, Dr. Pamela Isley, one of Gotham's deadliest villains, a botanist turned eco terrorist with a powers control plants with an immunity to toxins. Here, Ivy's striking design makes her unforgettable. Her green skin, red hair, and mesmerizing demeanor embody her connection to nature. Once she gets a taste of the Titan formula, her plants spread across Arkham Island, warping the landscape and making her a persistent threat. Ivy's influence on the environment is everywhere, her vines slowly taking over, altering the setting and atmosphere of the asylum in ways few villains do. This also leads to one of the more infuriating gameplay elements in Arkham Asylum, which is dealing with those annoying spores, but we're not really here for that, are we? One of Ivy's most fascinating qualities is how her personality contrasts with more brutish villains like Killer Croc. Ivy is calculated, charismatic, and unwaveringly dedicated to her cause, making her motives almost sympathetic. Her dialogue reflects her certainty and her own righteousness, giving her a compelling depth that's rare among the rogues gallery. Like some villains, she's not driven by lust for chaos, but you know, she wants a better world. Ivy's boss battle is definitely unique in the sense that it's challenging and visually striking, especially on the harder difficulties it's challenging, rather than the straightforward brawls of the Titan battles. Ivy forces you to dodge and stay agile, fending off her powerful vines, toxic spores, and infected guards. Maybe one of the most memorable boss fights, even if for the wrong reasons. Ultimately, Poison Ivy ranks high not just because of her boss battle, but because she feels like a genuine, evolving presence on the island. Her influence is felt throughout Arkham, making her a powerful antagonist who embodies a unique combination of beauty and menace. With her compelling design, environmental impact, and striking personality, Poison Ivy leaves a lasting impression as one of Batman's most formidable foes and one of my favorite personal villains in the Arkham series. You should feel sorry for him. He never fully got over his parents' death. It left him quite insane. Now, I don't think anyone who completed this game will ever forget the moment they thought their game froze and lost all their progress is truly one of those unforgettable moments that marks Arkham Asylum as a classic. Our runner-up Scarecrow is the definition of psychological horror, the living experiences to stick with you after you've completed the game for years to come. Scarecrow or Dr. Jonathan Crane is a former psychiatrist who uses his knowledge of fear to terrorize Gotham. Obsessed with exposing people to their deepest dreads, he uses a potent fear toxin and distorts reality in preys on victims' minds, leading to several interesting and often memorable segments in the game. With his twisted fascination for fear and manipulation, Scarecrow is one of Batman's most psychologically complex villains. His segments in Arkham Asylum are among the game's most memorable, introducing terrifying hallucinations and unsettling shifts in gameplay that set him apart. Each encounter traps Batman in twisted landscapes that are brought on by his own traumas, forcing players to confront distorted visions and nightmare fueled illusions. And the gradual descent into these mindscapes, paired with Scarecrow's haunting monologues, makes each encounter like a plunge into Batman's psyche, enhancing the game's psychological depth and horror. Though Scarecrow never presents a traditional boss fight, his sequences do test our patience. Roaming and stealth skills, the blend of platforming and stealth within these warped visions, demands precision. You know, his designs are equally unsettling, with his looming skeletal frame and eerie syringe gloves that you feel like are gonna you know, pop you at any moment. And his glowing eyes creating that chilling figure, you know, it just sticks with you. Scarecrow's unique presence in Arkham Island is unlike any other villain. Scarecrow manipulates Batman's mind, making his impact deeply personal and terrifyingly unpredictable as you never know when his fear gas will be released, making you equally fearful of your surroundings and what is and isn't real. His encounters are less about physical confrontation, more about psychological manipulation, making him feel like a threat Batman can never fully shake off. While I prefer his suit in Arkham Knight, this one is nothing short of iconic. In the end, Scarecrow's legacy in Arkham Asylum is unforgettable. Sure stand out that thoroughly deserves a spot. However, we all know he can never live up to the next on the list. Welcome to the madhouse, Batman! I set a trap and you sprang it gloriously! Now let's get this party. It's honestly a bit annoying that this is such an easy pick for number one, mostly because any other choice would have been or would have felt completely wrong. While I didn't grow up watching Batman the Animated Series or 
Batman and media in general, Arkham Asylum was my first full experience of the Joker. This game gave me my first exposure to Mark Hamill's Joker and as anyone will tell you he is absolutely perfect here. Even revisiting the game after all this time I'm still captivated by his performance, especially how funny this version of the character is, even if morbidly so. The Joker is the ultimate antagonist across all Batman media a chaotic, clown-like figure with no regard for human life. He's sadistic, thrives on mayhem, and is genuinely delighted by the fear and destruction he causes. Without any definite backstory as highlighted by the tapes in the game, he pushes Batman to his moral and mental limits, creating challenges that no other villain can match. In Arkham Asylum, he's not just a distant threat, he's ever-present, and his voice is always taunting and manipulating Batman from the game's opening moments. His manipulation, power, and presence are what make him such a great villain, utilizing the Asylum as his own personal playground, and then puppeteering our protagonist and his goons <laughs> throughout the story. Between killing off his lackeys to just trying to mess with Batman, the Joker's overall plan escalates the game's stakes to a climatic showdown, pushing Batman physically and mentally. Unfortunately, with the ending of the game isn't very fondly remembered for myself and for other fans, of course, and the Joker is uncharacteristically turned into a titan giant. It doesn't really take anything away from what came before, and while his boss battle is nothing to write home about, it's still enjoyable. So it's generally hard to write about all the fascinating aspects that make up the Joker's character without sounding redundant about what everyone else has already said. How his psychopathy and unpredictability scratch that villain itch in the back of our heads. What I'm sure makes the Joker the clear number one is how seemingly he blends humor, horror, and unpredictability. His presence is felt everywhere and his performance is unforgettable, making him the most compelling villain in Arkham Asylum. No other antagonist matches his impact, making Joker the iconic villain who truly defines the Arkham franchise. And honestly, that's the list. I hope you guys enjoyed it and please leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. With that said, feel free to subscribe for more mediocre content. Have a great day and yeah, I'm out.